guys, I'm Ashley. Welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. I'm so glad you're here. Um, this week we're doing a do a lesson video with me on the story of the world. So I wanna share with you why I picked it, how we're using it, and then give you a quick little glimpse into how my daughter uses it. Uh, it's really not that fancy. So <laughs> this might be a nice short and sweet video. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us. All right, ladies, this video is in collaboration with Yasmin over at Mommy on the Move. She encouraged a bunch of us who are using Story of the World to uh, each show how we do a lesson with each different volume. There's four volumes of Story of the World, and we are in volume three currently, but it's a little bit tricky how we're doing it, and I'm gonna explain it to you why it's kind of tricky. But yes, we're in volume three right now. Okay, I got something in my eye. All right, here I got it. I got my volume three. So let me tell you a little bit of history that we have with Story of the World and why I've picked it, why I'm sticking with it, and how it works with our curriculum. Um, I started Story of the World several years ago when my kids were uber little. They were like, my oldest was first grade, I think. <laughs> and we were doing Story of the World then and did volume one back then. Uh, it was great, went through most of the whole thing and, and it was fine. But then I hopped, hopped you know, went back and forth between different curriculums. And then this last year, I decided to come back to it because I thought, hey, it's pretty solid. It's got some really good writings that the kids can understand. Uh, it's easy for me to keep up. It's short lessons. And it's a nice, good overview of history as a whole. So we went through the entire volume one last year again. Then what happens is you would say, oh, you're supposed to go to volume two after you do volume one, right? Nope, that's just not how I'm doing it. What happens is I decided to go with A Gentle Feast, cycle three, uh, because it has a time period, uh, a historical time period of American history that we have not hit on yet. I've done stuff in cycle one, I've done time, the time period in cycle two, and cycle three is where we would be at. So I looked at Story of the World. Oh, let me back up. Okay, so anyway, I decided not to do volume two of Story of the World, which we should have done a few years ago when we did do me medieval history. But anyway, I gotta tell you really quick how a gentle feast works. With a gentle feast, cycle three is mostly American history, but some older other world history, ancient history as well. But it is going to be American 1800s is what it is, cycle three. American expansion, the Civil War, Reconstruction. There is a book recommended in uh, A Gentle Feast for your history text, basically. And it's called The Great Republic. And it's mostly, it's all about American history, pretty much. And I looked at this and decided I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I looked through and I read through it and I noticed the language that it was using. And I decided it was, probably just gonna not work for our family, not work for my daughter, cause she's she's doing this on her own. I used to do history all together, but now I do it a little bit differently this year. So I looked at the Great Republic and I thought, hmm, we could do this, or I could just continue with Story of the World. Because when I looked at what was included in the Great Republic, it was very, very, very similar to Story of the World. Except Story of the World isn't just American history, it's world history and American history. So that's the main difference there. But I thought, you know what? This is my curriculum, I make it work for me, and I'm not gonna do The Great Republic, we're gonna do Story of the World. We're going to split between volume three and then volume four, because that's the time period that matches uh, what we're doing with A Gentle Feast Cycle Three. So here's how I did this. Okay, so I looked at a gent uh, not a gentle, I looked at Story of the World, volume three. They have the handy dandy contents here. And I looked at the topics that are given for each chapter. And I looked and looked and looked until I found about the time, a chapter that starts at about the same time as the Great Republic. And then I looked at that chapter and thought, okay, we're gonna start there. And then I looked through each chapter. And at this time, we're not going to do all the world history parts. We are just picking, I'm just picking the chapters that go with mostly the American history stuff. And then maybe a few others that I think will be will be fine. So I wrote on a handy dandy note card which chapters my daughter needs to listen to. And these are the only chapters she will do from volume three. 
there. And every time we finish a chapter, we check it off and then we know which chapter we need to do next. So that's pretty easy. Now, normally you would read this, like it's a book, you're supposed to read it. And in the past, I did it as a read aloud for everybody. So I would read it to everybody. This year, I decided to give my boys a break with it because to be honest, she was really the only one interested anyway. It always ended up me just reading it to her last year and they were okay with some of it. But anyway, I decided we're gonna just hand this to her and she's gonna do it. But she was not as interested in reading it herself. She wanted to listen to it. We got the CD set and we have it on audio and I don't know why I didn't do this before. I don't know why. <laughs> why didn't I do volume one one audio? Audio has changed my life, guys, because I used to feel like I read to the kids all the time, all day. I was reading to them, reading to them. This is something that I can take off my plate and put it on their plate, and it's not on my plate anymore. So that is one thing I really like about Story of the World is it being uh, audio accessible. So good. So my daughter puts the CD in, she listens to the chapter that I told her to listen to, and then she narrates it to me. What does it mean to narrate? She comes and finds me after she listens and tells me what she remembers from it. I'll re-record anything she needs to in her reading journal um, or her book of centuries, and then we go on our merry way. And I only do one chapter a week right now, since we're not doing all the chapters. Um, I might bump it up to two chapters a week, but for now, one chapter a week is working out really nicely. So that is how we do Story of the World, Volume 3. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. I don't know why I said y'all, but thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. I love to talk about uh, affordable homeschool curriculum, biblically-based curriculum, and Charlotte Mason-inspired homeschool. Don't forget to check out Yasmin's video and the playlist with all the other do a lesson with me for story of the world and all the volumes so that way you can kind of get a taste of what's in it and how they all work together. Uh, but we're doing the end of early modern times and I'm thankful I can have my daughter do this on her own. She's definitely old enough to be able to listen to it on her own and that's how we make it work. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I can't wait to chat with you down there and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys rock at homeschooling and go find his joy among the noise. I will see you later.